Everyone tells us now that Britain has finally become a nation that understands food. We have Michelin-starred restaurants, we have Jamie Oliver going on missionary jaunts to Rotherham, we have the Observer Food Monthly. We've finally grown up and can at last take our place at the dinner party of nations that know how to cook and eat for themselves, rather than having to sit at the children's table with Germany and Australia. Well, bollocks we have. I don't think there has been any real change in our culture. We've just given the train spotter element of our society another set of trains to spot. In no way are we approaching the French or Italian attitude where, whilst great chefs in great restaurants may do great things, the important fact is that everyone takes food seriously. We're still in a position where the average Frenchman takes food twice as seriously as the average Briton. It's just that now a tiny minority of Britons take it 7,000 times more seriously than anyone need ever take it. Meanwhile, the rest of us continue to mock them for their earnestness with all the vigour and enthusiasm we use to mock philately or campanology or any other atelier or ology. Which is the problem, because what we're doing is taking our obsession with minutely collecting or constructing things that don't really matter, like stamps or model railways, and applying it to something that does matter, food. Heston Blumenthal, while I have no doubt he's a great chef, is the epitome of this ridiculous heightening of food into train spottery nonsense. The traditional British idea of a food inventor is someone like the Earl of Sandwich, taking a quick, thoughtless bite to eat whilst concentrating on something that really matters, like whist. Blumenthal is the opposite of that. You can imagine him forgetting to eat, so engrossed is he in his new invention. His wife comes up to the kitchen stroke lab at three in the morning. Heston, please, you haven't eaten for three days. At least have a sandwich. I can't, I can't. I'm on the verge of creating the perfect sandwich. So no, we haven't embraced continental good sense about food, we've merely added cuisine to the list of fads British men get disproportionately obsessed by. It's no more a sea change than if we all vaguely knew about train numbers. It's like polar exploration all over again. Britain produced many of the most famous polar explorers in the world, but for the rest of us, our capacity for coping in icy conditions remains woeful. When it comes to people who are good at coping with four inches of snow, we have Scott, Shackleton and no other bastard. With food, it's Blumenthal, Ramsay, Oliver and a handful of others, but it's pot noodle and pepper army there on down.